know you have it in you. What do you say, my? Mrs. Peacock! Mrs. Peacock! You don't have to be very brave, Elizabeth. It's the Count. He's dead. What? So, the French Count, or so he called himself, is dead. And the evidence points to these six murder suspects. Six murder suspects, six weapons, and don't forget, there are six rooms at the Grange. The drawing room, the study, the kitchen, dining room, billiard room, and of course the library. Somewhere in all of that lies the solution to this foul murder. Our detectives are ready to interview the suspects, but first, to decide who begins, Edward and Karen, a test for your powers of observation. There was a phone in the dining room. What colour was it? Black. It was black, correct. This means you now have the right to ask three questions of these suspects and then make a deduction. But before we start, one final point. Five of the suspects here will be telling the truth. Only the murderer can lie. I'd like to ask Colonel Mustard, why were you coming out of the kitchen with a smile on your face? Um, I had just been told by Mrs. White <clears throat> that the Comte, the so-called Comte, was a fraud. And this what? was... What? Did you not know? Well, he was a talking oh, about a fraud. He was, he was a fraud. fraud. He was a, he was a fraud, which was relieved me a great deal. He was a very real How man. Do you know? Because my Sorry. business, as it were, was a little under threat. I think you have the answer there. Yeah, I'd like to ask Mrs. Peacock. Um, I think there's more to this engagement than a pure love match. How did you meet this count? What a fairy. <laughs> A fairy story. Third question. <laughs> and then your deduction, please. Mrs. White, you'd have quite a lot to lose, wouldn't you? If uh, Mrs. Peacock had married the Count. Why? Well, I suppose I might have. As he was keen to divert all her money to his own charities. And you know where they begin. <laughs> your deduction, please. And remember, who committed the murder with what weapon and in which room? I think it was Mrs. White. Why? Yeah. 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 Never. Yeah. Never. Yes. I've been with Mrs. Peacock for 25 years. <laughs> with the kitchen knife? Study? Yes. In the study. So you're saying that it's Mrs. White with the kitchen knife in the study. Yes. I have to tell you you're wrong on all three of those no, assumptions. So those elements are eliminated from further inquiry. <laughs> and the advantage now passes to Nanette and Mike. Your first question, please. Well, um, I would like to ask you, Professor Plum, during the time you were running, were you aware of where the Reverend was? I was rather towards the end. I think it was a confused situation. I didn't see him. I think it was a confused situation. You didn't situation. see him. No, not at all. Oh, right. Thank your you. second question. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, we'd like to ask Mrs. White. Uh, yes. We saw you at the window I'm looking. Sorry, did you see the end of the race? Were no, you still at I the didn't. window? No, because I was watching uh, uh, the, uh, the so called Comte, and I noticed that he came in, and I didn't wish him to see me, so I secreted myself behind the curtain. <laughs> um, well, I, uh, Mrs. Peacock. Uh, could I find out why you decided to change your will quite suddenly? This is... I thought these people were my friends. I have not changed my will. The cop was conning I you, realized mother. The this, third world You must realize this is a very distressing evening I, I, for yes, some of the I, people here. Your deduction, please. We think it's Colonel Mustard. Colonel Mustard. The highly suspicious yeah. <laughs> Well, with his background in the SAS, we imagine that he would use a knife. He is above murder. In the dining room. In the dining room. So you're saying it's Colonel Mustard with the knife in the dining room. Yes. Yeah. You're right on one of those assumptions. So, there you have it for the moment. Two sets of deductions. Oh, yeah, no, but before we go on, I want to put that same evidence to our grand jury, the 300 members of our studio audience here. Now, you've seen the clues, you've heard the suspects, and you've heard our detectives. 
What's your verdict? This is your chance to put your finger on the guilty party. So please make your decision now. And that's how you decided. Uh, one in four of you, 24%, pointed the finger at Colonel Mustard. Yeah. But one in three, 30% said quite assuredly, it was Vivian Scarlett. Yeah. Join us in a couple of moments when we will indeed reveal the identity of the person who murdered the French Count. Welcome back. So, a murdered fake French Count with, we now know, five possible murder weapons in five rooms at Arlington Grange. And now that Mrs. White has been eliminated, the certainty that one of the five remaining suspects is the murderer. And this moment, the finger of suspicion is pointing very clearly at Vivian Scarlett. Oh. Yeah. But before I invite our detective to make a fresh deduction, some fascinating new evidence. Evidence that could help you reach a decision, or maybe put you right off the scent. He's a con man. What kind of a person hangs on to his title 200 years after his country got rid of their aristocracy? I, I know. Everybody knows except Mrs. Peacock. What do you want me to do about it? Oh, get rid of him. For me, Pete, I can't bear it. He's making a laughing stock out of my stepmother. It's not right. Well, I'll, I'll think about it. Of course. A girl who said no to a guy when he asked her out might change her mind if she thought he was big and strong and willing to protect her. Me quick. There's something I must tell you. Can it wait? It's about the man who calls himself the Comte de Beauchamp. It can't wait. Aha. No. Uh -huh. So, to decide who has the chance to apply this new evidence first, Net and Micah, test for your powers of observation. Professor Plum had a sweatshirt on. What was the educational establishment on it? Harvard University. Yes. Harvard University, correct. This means you now can cross-examine the suspect. But we're going to limit you to one question. And a deduction. So a question, please. Well, we would like to ask Miss Scarlett um, where she was during the race, because quite obviously she was dressed ready to join in the race when she was in the library with Colonel Mustard, but I never saw her taking part. Where were you, Miss Scarlett? I ran in the race. I actually won the women's part of the race. I could confirm that, actually. I was um, just behind her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We'll pursue that no further. Your deduction, please. Excuse me. Um, now then, let's just have a little think here. Sorry, I'm suspicious. We think that Professor Plum was rather intimidated by this and a rather weak man. And what? Yes, I, I, think, I think he was. No, no. And it, he uh, did it with the paperweight because obviously he wasn't a man who would use any, uh, you know, really like a gun or anything like that because he wouldn't know how to. <laughs> and, um, I'm an American. How can you say I don't know how to use a gun? And we think, Professor Plum, you did this horrible deed in the dining room. So it's yeah. Professor Plum with the paperweight in the, paper in the dining room. Yeah. You're right on one of those assumptions, I'm afraid, but only one. Yeah. So it comes back to Edward and Karen. Your question, please, and then a deduction. Yes, I would like to ask um, Colonel Mustard to explain his relationship a bit more fully with Mrs. Is Peacock. this relevant, do you think, to the yes. inquiry? Yes, I do. Colonel Mustard. I am extremely fond of both the ladies in the family. I've, I've been a family friend for many years, and uh, our relationship has been uh, of the best of friends and, of course, business associates. And that's all I'm prepared to say in public. <laughs> I have a straw 